Victim Services Director at the Smith County District Attorney's Office. Um, I asked for the dog because I, ha I deal with a lot of children. Originally, we thought we only needed her for the children that come up here. We have since found that she actually helps with our prosecutors. They will come to my door constantly all day long just to say hi to Emmy. Um, and then we found she helps with the domestically violent, uh, abused women that come up here. She seems to really have a calming effect on them. So anytime there's a child or a victim that's extremely emotionally distressed, we bring her in and she just has a calming effect on wherever she's at. We got Emmy through a company called Canine Companions. Um, you have to do a very extensive application process. You start out with uh, a paper application, it's short, on email. And if they respond to you, they will call you. You have to do a phone interview. You have to do about a 14 page application explaining how you're going to use the dog and uh, all the specifics on how you're going to care for it and where you live. You don't have to send them pictures of the office and your home. Sometimes she's in a crate in my office. Uh, I have doggy gates around my office. So it has free range to run and roam in there. If there's victims here, um, she can come in the victim room. We call it a snuggle, but what she's doing here with me is it's what it is. They can love on her. We sometimes show our commands just so they can see how intelligent she is. Because, you know, to small kids, it's really cool that the dog can do all these different things. She responds to over 50 commands. Use a, a ton of the door before she opens the door. Show her closing the door. She will pick things up off the floor. To help them, I think usually the snuggle is the biggest one. Um, Sometimes we play fetch in the hall, if that's what the child wants to do. We'll get her ball and her toys out. And sometimes I just play with her. The little silly one that I taught her is to get the Kleenex. Um, we do teach them how to lead her because if they're going to take her to the court and they need to learn how to lead her, they need to know how to put her in a down so that we can put her in the box where they testify. We leave her in here with the victims. The victims sit in this room that we're videoing in. Um, this is their safe place so that they're not around the defendant's family. They stay here the whole time, except for when they go down to testify. When she goes down to, if it's a child, we take her down with them and she goes in, sits at their feet and just lays there. Uh, sometimes she'll raise up and kind of nudge them if they're getting upset to try to calm them back down. With Canine Companions, when they raise and breed their own dogs, they're all Labs, Goldens, or Lab Cross Mix. Um, she is a cross from the time they're born till they're six weeks old, eight weeks old. They begin to trim their nails. They begin to socialize them. They have people come over and handle them and love on them and just try to socialize them even at six weeks old. Once they're eight weeks old, they place them with volunteer puppy raiser and they teach them all the basics. Anything you might teach your pet dog until they're about 16 months old. And when they're 16 months old, they're moved to the professional training and they go through a minimum of six months professional training every day working on advanced commands. And that's the commands that chain several things together. Most of them charge a fee for their dogs. Uh, the difference with canine companions is they place their dogs for free. There's no charge for them. If you qualify and make it through their adoption process, uh, they even pay for your training to go through two weeks of training to handle the dog. This is my third dog. I did have another dog that was a golden, and we had a child that had been interviewed once, but when she came to us, she wouldn't talk to the prosecutor, she wouldn't talk to anybody. She sat down on the floor and started telling us some things that she hadn't told anybody. Later in that interview, where she was in the room by herself, we were video in the room. Uh, on the camera, we hear her lower herself down, and she said to Petra, Petra, I've told you things I've not told anybody else. And 
thank you for being such a good dog. And then she kissed her and she said, I hope when you die, you go to heaven. Macy was my first one. I had her only 10 months. She got bone cancer. She was a, a little bit more active. Uh, probably I would say a little bit of a quirky personality. Uh, Petra was very, very, very laid back. Very quiet. Nothing scared her, nothing excited her. Um, but she was also very good at her job because of the fact that she was so laid back. Amy is a little bit distractible. She is very excitable. Uh, I say she's my squirrel dog. We can be doing something and all of a sudden she just going to forget what she was supposed to be doing and she's going to jump up and go do something. And it's just like whatever crosses her mind, that's what it's going to do. When we go home, Amy takes her working clothes off and I just let her go out in the yard and she runs and she plays. I have a golden retriever that is a stay at home pet. And when we get home, they run and they wrestle and they play. And she just loves to roll in the dirt and get dirty just like any regular dog. Say bye-bye. There you go.